the worst people on paternity court. She had two other girls from her husband. She would leave us all, you know, leave me alone to babysit them. So either she could go to the casino, so she could gamble anywhere, you know. That's not she true. Would. That is true. That's Did you sleep with anyone else? Were you intimate with anyone else? Yes, I was. Did you use protection? No. Why did he bring it up a long time ago? See, I didn't. Because he didn't know you cheated, right? Right. Had you ever told Mr. McCrory about this? No, I didn't. He didn't know you slept with someone someone else when you were broken up. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Let's roll out this tale of six-month-old Majestic. Miss Cole was 100% sure that our dear plaintiff fathered her daughter, but he's denying it. Wanna know why? Just hear him out. So, Mr. Webb, how can you be so certain you are not this child's biological father? I never had sex with her, Your Honor. <laughs> Well, that would rule you out. You never had sex with her? No. Yeah, he did. She's a liar. <laughs> She's crazy. You've never had sex with her? She's absolutely crazy. Now, isn't that a rarity case? The plaintiff claims to have never seen her moonlight. Hold on. If you haven't done anything, mister, why come here? On the downside, it seems like Ms. Cole might be crazy or the worst person to ever come to paternity court. He stayed with me for two months. He slept in my bed with me for one night and we had sex. April 11th. That's when you believe you conceived your daughter? Yeah. This is strange. We never had sex or anything. We were just friends. We would chill out. That was it. You were never intimate with her in any way? I never stayed in her bedroom. This entire situation is just too confusing for all of us, ain't it? Mr. Webb was out front trying to score a home run, and he wasn't backing down from the testimony, even after Miss Cole was persistent on the story. Oh boy, who is telling the truth here? I was only there That's for a week and a, a week, a week and a half. That's not true. That's a lie. Miss you... Cole, all right, take me back to the night you believe you conceived. I can't exactly remember, but I know that it was a night that we was partying. Oh yeah, right. Although the defendant, Miss Cole, did claim that the plaintiff has been denying the baby in hopes of saving his relationship with the woman standing next to him. Hmm. Well, seems to give off a little logic, but before you assume anything, the plaintiff revealed another detail. Your Nothing. Honor, the worst that we've ever done is take a picture, and she was already in the bathroom. She had called me in there. When I walked in the bathroom, she said cheese and took a picture before I could even say anything. I didn't even want to take that picture. That's how crazy she is. She posted it on Facebook. There's more than one. She posted it on Facebook, and when I told her to take it down, she refused to because she's crazy. Now, doesn't that sound like one big tactic on the defendant's end trying to pin the baby onto me? Webb? Now, the defendant seems a little crazy to me, right? But when all that wasn't enough, the defendant's mama came for the rescue. <laughs> you said you and your husband were taking care of Mr. Webb? Yes, and my grandkids and anybody else that needed. You're a liar. You you're are a liar. A liar. You are a liar. You're Everything that you're, you're saying. Liar. She my was mom, on the phone with me five, six times you're a day. Liar. Why was Mr. Webb living with you? He's a punk bum. Come on, give me a break. How can someone be this delusional? I mean, like, what is wrong with the defendants? Only to find the truth is to open the concealed envelope, and honestly, we don't know what to expect. So, buckle up for some truth serum. Mr. Webb, you are not her father. Oh! oh. Yeah, uh, crazy. You need Webb. to go to a mental hospital. Ms. Webb. There, get her there. Get her there. Mr. Suicide. Webb, Ms. Reams, stop. But I want a lie detector. Listen, yeah, no, no, no. we don't clown in this courtroom. Oh, boy. Isn't that just tragic to witness? The baby mama was so sure through the testimony. Where is your attitude gone now, Miss Cole? You better start hunting for the man. And oh, Mr. Webb, you better control your emotions because we have a baby at stake here. We have counseling and resources available to you Thank to God. help you because I'm a little concerned. <laughs> we are. It, stop laughing. Stop laughing. I apologize, Your Honor. It really isn't funny. Whatever the partying and all this stuff is, you took part in it, and it landed you right here. This is not <laughs> funny. He was the Picture this, Mr. McQuarry just had his world rocked, and we're not talking about some run-of-the-mill static shock. Nope, this was a bombshell dropped by his wife, unveiling a secret affair from back when she was cooking up with little Keith. Now, the once unshakable foundation of their marriage is cracking 
under the pressure of this jaw-dropping revelation. It says you all broke up for a few days around Keith's conception. Is that true? Yes, yes Your Honor. And so during that breakup, Ms. McCrory, did you sleep with anyone else? Were you intimate with anyone else? Yes, I was. Did you use mm -hmm. protection? No. Had you ever told Mr. McCrory about this? No, I didn't. Whoa, Ms. McCrory, seriously? You've got some explaining to do. I mean, come on, we're talking about your husband here. And let me jog your memory. You're in a freaking marriage. Plus, you two were only apart for a hot minute, and you went and pulled this cheating stunt? The bed wasn't even, like, pulled. Like, it was, we just broke up. Like, I mean, if, if me and her, you know, if something happens no. to her and she dies today, I'm not gonna have a new woman in the bed three days later because, you know, the death to us part. The, the thing was, I couldn't get a hold of her. I called her for two days. She ignored me. Finally, I get a hold of her. There's a guy in the background. Hold up. You won't believe this wild plot twist. Miss McCreary kept a lid on the fact that she was getting all cozy with another dude during her pregnancy. And you want to know why? Because she was like, duh, man, it's your baby, no doubt. Can you believe the audacity? Why did he bring it up a long time ago? See, I didn't... Because he didn't know you cheated, right? Right. He didn't know you slept with someone else when you were broken up. Am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Because you see, said the bed wasn't even cold yet. Yes, Your Honor. And see, the thing is, the potential father, she would promise him, say she'd send him pictures and stuff like that, but she said she, she wasn't sending him pictures. But wait, there's more to the saga. The baby mama had some other sneaky habits on the down low. I mean, seriously, no husband would be throwing a party about it. Can someone please clue this woman in on the whole responsibility of being a wife? Because she is failing miserably at it. These are photos that you're afraid she's um, also sending to men. There's nothing wrong with that picture. Yes, Your Honor, I, no, I, am. I no mean, the first one was just like not too long ago. And those pictures, I mean, I wasn't even with him. The first and that's one just pictures, was like Those pictures have been on Facebook six months for ago. years. And I don't do that stuff no more. The first one was like probably like less than six or seven months ago. Talk about a contender for the title of the worst wife ever to grace the paternity court. Seriously, lady, where are you even going with all this drama? It's like you're on a mission to grab the attention of every dude in town while playing Russian roulette with the fate of your marriage. Even though, as a husband, you may not want your wife posting these kind of photos, I don't think the photos alone are evidence that Keith Jr. may not be your biological child, but I do believe the fact that she admittedly slept with someone without protection, this guy, during the time you all were on this break, is reason to doubt. Yes, sir. Yo, check if the plaintiff's got his mind made up. He's throwing down the ultimatum. If the results come back negative, he's out of the marriage. Sad as it may sound, who wants to stick around with a toxic vibe like hers, right? It's a no-brainer. How long have you guys been married? We've been married for three years, been together for four. And so you all are raising these two children together. You have this beautiful son, you love him dearly, but now you have questions regarding his paternity. Yes, Your Honor. And so now the marriage is on the rocks. You have absolutely no trust now. Oh, for real, can this whole situation get any dumber? No matter what Mr. McCrory was up to during your marriage break, Miss McCreary, he ain't the one who can pop out a kid. Responsibility check anyone? Anyways, here's a shot at patching up the shattered bond. Let's see how the results roll. Mr. McCreary, you are the father. <laughs> yeah, I told you so. Congratulations. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm happy for you. So, Miss Ching Long rolls into the court on a mission to unravel the mystery of her paternity. She kicks off the session by throwing shade at her mom, claiming she was hopping in and out of beds with dudes like it was a sport, and she couldn't even keep track. My mother is absolutely to blame, you know. I was born to the most irresponsible, selfish, immature person in the world. You know, she already had a three-year-old when I was born in the same situation, not knowing who her father was as well. So my mother should have known better not to be sleeping with multiple people at the same time. Oh man, there's this whole resentment saga brewing in Miss Chilong's heart. And it looks like mama didn't bother dealing with it in time. Now, Miss Baruby's in front of Judge Lake, and she's got some serious explaining to do. He got in a relationship with a Maybe really a bad person. Time. I got married to a very controlling man. My ex-husband moved me 1,700 miles yeah, from Arkansas. Yeah, but it was, you know, they fought all the time, back, and it, it, it was always her fault. I moved back fault, over there to California so she could have a relationship no, with James. She depended he on her ex-husband. My birth certificate doesn't have his name on it. It has somebody else's name. The daughter wasn't cutting mama any slack. One outburst after another, 
It was like a front row seat to the drama that the poor plaintiff had been dealing with her entire life. The poor thing had been shelling out cash to play mom to her other siblings because mama was too busy turning up and partying. She had two other girls from her husband. She would leave us all, you know, leave me alone to babysit them. So either she could go to the casino, so she could gamble anywhere, you know. That's not she true. Would. That is true. That's she not knows true. it's true. This or is not true because I've always been a loving mother to her. I've always been the best friend. I've always never, told her the truth. I don't even call truth. her mother. I call I've her woman. She knows that. Now that was just so brutal. I swear. Miss Ching Long also reveals more of her mother's secrets and how her other daughters treat her. But just have a look at the face of the defendant. She wasn't even flinching an eye. Her other daughters don't even speak to her anymore. Yes, they do. My oldest sister, you know, was raised on and oh, off with her. Lying. You can, you know, you can talk to anybody about all this. It's all true. No, this is. I told true. you my mother's delusional. She'll never own up to anything, and that's why we're in this own predicament. Up. That's, I'm the one that. I'm the you one. Know, she won't own up to anything. What are you talking about? Own up. Hold on to your hats, because if you thought that was too much, buckle up, my friend, because there's more drama coming your way. After those family revelations the late potential father's crew stepped into the court to spill the tea. When James got home from work, he said, Valerie's having the baby, but we can't go. We don't know where she's at. And I said, well, she told me we couldn't go. So not I didn't true. see the baby until she was about two months old. Valerie, it is true, That's and you know true. it. I never called him. Then how did we know you I didn't even know the number. She'll he never own around up to anything. Sure. Hmm, the mother was on this streak of not owning up to anything. She was sticking to her claims like glue. Now you might be thinking, is this a gang up on Miss Baruby? Or are they all just spitting straight facts? Well, guess what? We're gonna find out as this session keeps rolling. It's about to get real, folks. She told me we weren't allowed to be at the hunt. We, she, she wouldn't tell us. No, because I didn't talk to she nobody. She didn't want us here because You can ask my parents. They're not here as witnesses. My parents were at the hospital. hospital. This is not was true. Was your ex at the hospital? No, he was. The man that, the man that she put the, the name on the birth though, certificate, the guy she lived with when she got pregnant, was at the hospital. Oh, boy. Talk about a head scratcher. That mother's behavior is just off the charts, irresponsible. Can you even imagine the mental pain and torture poor Miss Ching Long must have endured as a kid? Well, how about we put an end to this mother-daughter feud and finally bring her distress to a close? It's about time, isn't it? Mrs. Ching Long, James Audis was your father. <laughs> I have a bear for you to me that you can me. <laughs> so, we got Mrs. Eastridge on the stand trying to save her marriage, claiming her son Wesley's paternity is causing World War III in her household. Talk about throwing in some verbal missiles. Oh boy, now her marriage is about to end in kamikaze style. Well, the argument started um, when uh, she uh, got mad at me one day and we was arguing. When, while she was pregnant, she told me that she was leaving and going to one of her family members' houses and that for me not to worry about her or the baby because I'm not that baby's father, that it's her ex's baby. All right, so the baby mama has dropped a bomb all by herself saying Wesley might not be hubby's biological kid. Here's advice, Miss Eastridge, you can't unring once you rang that bell. And trust me, this follows like an echo. You know what I mean. Well, I got mad one day because we were arguing and I looked at him and it was out of anger. I told him that not to worry about me or the baby because he wasn't his. So you say you were saying it out of spite. Yes, Your Honor. But you knew once you made that statement, there was no taking it back, right? Yes, Your Honor. And you said it anyway. Yes, Your Honor. Yo, seriously, Mrs. Eastridge needs to chillax with her argument game. Like, is this how grown-ups handle their stuff? Seems like she's on the borderline disorder train, and that's a one-way ticket to relationship disaster. And Mr. Eastridge, oh man, the poor guy's got a whole lot of simmering in his heart ready to spill out. I didn't know what to think because we just got married like three days before we found out that she was pregnant. Oh, so you weren't married yet when Wesley was conceived. No, Your Honor. And you weren't sure whether or not she had been intimate with someone else. Correct, Your Honor. What? This is just hilarious. One, you are newly married and you find your wife being pregnant, and two, your wifey gave you the ultimate doubt. 
I couldn't just imagine the mental strain you must have on Mr. Eastridge. My family and his family saying, you know, he's not yours. Your family and his family? Yes, Sean. Oh, they, our, our families do not want us together. Neither one of the Neither sides one. of the family, yours or his? Yes, Your Honor. So tell me what else is happening. So you're arguing about paternity in the home? Yes, Your Honor, but I know for a fact that Wesley is his son. All right. Now, Miss Eastridge, you just made a foolish attempt to jeopardize the image of the family claiming that they want you guys together. But we are asking you, ma'am, what have you done to keep up with your husband, right? After we broke up, they let him live there. He lived there for ever since me and Anthony got together, pretty much. So your ex remained close to your family? Yes, Your Honor. He made sure that he was there. Okay. And if he wasn't there whenever me and Anthony came over, he'd be there within 10 minutes because they would call him. Now, isn't that just gaslighting the emotions of Mr. Eastridge? Now, she's all singing down the ex ringtone. And above all, he lives with her family. What a mess. And if this wasn't known, just look what our plaintiff has to confess next. Talk about the worst wife ever. Anthony actually cared about me and he actually loved me. Is whenever I let whenever I left it up on Facebook, left the mess, left the other Facebook up. I left it up. He read them, it he saw it then. So you were keeping this ex on backup because you had gotten that advice from a family member to keep one on backup just yeah, in case. I, that's been drilled in my head my entire life. What a prime example of showing loyalty. <laughs> Now, my head has been spinning after hearing this. I think we all should move to the DNA results after hearing that confession, right? So here was Judge Lake trying to do the obvious on why we are here. Mr. Eastridge, you are the father. You are the father. Wesley is your biological son. I'm happy to 